Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the ESP ULR-344STD Ketolike cam lock is what this is. Let's pull it out of the packaging and let's inspect all of the components. Uh, first of all, you're going to have the cylinder plug itself. The plug uh, contains the four captive disc tumblers that are here. Disc tumblers are rectangular pieces of metal that have different size rectangular cuts in them. Sometimes they'll have a step at the top. That would be indicative of a master keyed system. Um, and it's the method by which uh, the technology or platform of the cylinder operates. When you insert the key that operates it, it will bring the tumblers flush with the body. You can see they're projecting out now, but when I put that key in there and pull them down, that's how that'll turn. A key removes a blockage is what it does, and that's when you insert the key, it's removing the blockage of the tumblers projecting into the cylinder housing. The cylinder housing has this preparation in the edge right there where those tumblers stick up into, preventing it from turning, and that's how that works. Uh, that's what it would look like. Okay, so you've got your housing, you've got your plug. Let's take a dimension of the housing. Underside of the head to the back of the housing itself is about 5 sixteenths. All the way to the end of the threaded portion is pushing 3, well, 11 sixteenths, I'd say. Uh, obviously, it's going to come with two keys. These are original ESP keys. The key number, the indirect code, is on there. A reference document would tell them that ES... 40 uh, would tell them what the cuts are on this actual key blank. Okay, We don't know what those are. We don't have the reference document. Um, wouldn't be impossible to determine what that is by measuring the root of the blade to the bottom of each cut, having a reference document that tells us how many possible cuts are in each chamber, you know, and then we can figure it out pretty much from there. You're going to have two cams that will be included, or tail pieces. One is just a flat, straight cam. The other is an offset cam that can be installed either way. Uh, let me show you the flat one first. Basically, you put that on there, you're done. Okay. That offset, that can be installed depending on what you're attaching this to, this way or this way. Okay. Either way you like. Uh, and I'll give you the dimensions. The center of the flat cam to the edge of the prep looks like it's about an inch and three sixteenths. The center of the offset cam to the edge of that looks like it's about the same. That offset dimension, I guess we'll just eyeball that there on the camera, looks like it's about, about a quarter inch. Maybe the catalog will give us a better idea. About a quarter inch. It's going to include the two stop washers that go on the back. There are two of these pieces of flat metal. <clears throat> You'll notice that this one has an ear here and an ear here, and this one has an ear here and here. This one will allow 180 degree rotation. This one will only allow 90 degree rotation. Okay, so your function is determined by these stop washers. I don't know if this is key retaining or not. Let's take a look at that, meaning can you remove the key when it's in the unlocked position. Well, actually, we don't even have to test the key. We can look at the cylinder housing. And indeed, yes, you can remove this in any position you want because those preparations are in four different locations. So this way, this way, this way, that way. You can insert or pull the key out. So it's non-key retaining. It can be left locked or unlocked is what that means. The nut and the star washer to hold your tail pieces onto the threaded post on the back right there. Then you're going to have an additional bezel, if you like. Did you drill a hole that was too large? If you did, that's what it's going to look like. You will have a stop washer for the back so that you can, let's take a look here, Actually, it goes on the front. Uh, no, I'm going to go with the back. 
Let's let's take a look here. That's meant for a wood application, I believe. Right. <clears throat> and then your nut would hold that on. Mm, maybe. We'll take a look at the catalog where exactly this wood washer goes. And that exhausts all the components that are in the package. Now, let's uh, talk about where you're going to use this. So certainly where you're going to use this cam lock is going to be an application where you have something quite thin material-wise because the length of the body is quite short. Maybe very appropriate for a steel locker type application, maybe some sort of a plexiglass application. That offset cam will allow you to be able to use that either on something very thin or something thicker and using the offset nature of the cam to compensate for the very short length of the body itself. So really where you'll use this is going to be based on material thickness. The material thickness will drive the length of the cylinder body and then you have these different tail pieces that you can implement to solve the problem. This cylinder because it's key re it's non-key retaining you can use it any way that you like. You want to key go 180 degrees depending on how you need the tail piece to move. You need it to move from here to here or here to here or here to here and back. You can control all that. You get all of the options with this. And the only thing that's a bit less common about this is the fact that the cylinder length is so short. You wouldn't use this for a three quarter inch thick drawer front. <clears throat> you would use a longer body, but then have or retain all of the um, other features to it. The stop washers, the bezel, um, you know, the nut, the star washer, the wood, the wood ring as well. Okay, let's switch now to the screen view and let's take a closer look at the supporting documentation. This is the item that we are looking at. Let's take a look at the photos we have posted down below. There's the package and all of its contents. There's everything splayed out in front of you. Your stop washers, you can study the difference on those there versus there. And um, your bezel, your nut, your wood washer, your housing, your two tail pieces, obviously. The plug, the side view of the plug, the two original keys, the two cams, your accessories, then the balance of your accessories. Well, let's take a look at the cut sheet that we have that's linked to down below here as well. First of all, there's two pages. There's going to be a cross-reference that comes up with the ULR 344. does not have any other equals by other manufacturers. And as I alluded to earlier, that's really a reference to the very short nature of the cylinder itself. You know, you know inch and an eighth is going to be a very common length. Seven eighths, very common length. Inch and three eighths, less common. But nonetheless, again, it's designed based on the material length or material thickness that you're going through. So here is the uh, important dimension, I suppose, for, you, your, for, for your ULR 344 STD. And the important part about all of this is, of course, the eighth of an inch max material thickness. So that's where they're giving you what part number to use based on your max material, your maximum material thickness. Okay. So while you can certainly use your offset cam to accomplish, you know, other applications, if your material is, you know, one inch thick, there's just no way to get the cylinder body attached. Is the bottom line. So it has to be quite thin. Um, <clears throat> is how that is. ULR series utility lock replacement cam locks are manufactured in stock to carry other manufacturers' key blanks and co codes. All stocked key to like ESP Hudson National Fort codes are available for immediate delivery. These are the lengths that are available that are obviously listed here. Parts included in bag allow for 90 or 100 degree, 180 degree rotation. Restricted key pole, straight or offset, straight and offset cams. Um, I can't tell you how they're accomplishing restricted key pull, however, uh, which would be called key retaining. I don't see how they're doing that. Uh, oh, actually, let's take a closer look. 
Let's take a closer look and see if we can discover the true use of this wood washer, as I'm calling it, and how they might create restricted keep hole. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. May I ask you a question on your ULR series cam locks? Sure. There's a washer in the package that has its two prongs coming off that I would think of as a wood application. What, what is this used for? Uh, exactly that. So, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, okay. it's a versatile package. It's just kind of like kind of a use what you need out of it. Um, but, yeah. yeah, if that was a like a wooden desk drawer, that would be to secure from uh, yeah. any further rotation for the lock. Yeah, right on. Um, thank you. So the second and final question is the description states that it uh, has restricted keep hole. Uh, I, I can't figure how this is key retaining at all. Is is there something not in the package that would allow it to be key retaining? So what you're looking at for the shell, there's uh, essentially four grooves. Yes. Now, there are little pieces of plastic in there. Those are called spline fillers. Uh, depending on the rotation of your lock, you want to put one of those pieces of plastic in those grooves. And once you yeah, do right. that, that's going to make the, the that's going to be the key pull. So basically, if you want it to be key removable in locked position only, you'd be using one of those little plastic pieces. Yeah, I understand. And this package happens to be missing that. Oh, really? um, yeah, the, the client doesn't require key retaining, but okay. um, but so yeah, it's all good in that, in that case. But yes, okay. makes perfect sense. If you want it to be not, uh, key retaining, you're going to have to block that from the tumblers coming out. Awesome. Yeah. Well, well, thank you very much. I hope you have hey. a great Christmas. Hey, you too, Rich. Thank you very much. Bye bye. So there is the answer. You'll find that this washer is installed on the back side. Well, underneath the nut, and as you tighten it, it's meant to bite into the back of the wood, preventing rotation is the bottom line. Because in you, you can install this into lots of applications. If it's a steel application, you're going to do what's called a double D prep. And if you take note of the lock body here, it's got flattened sides here and on the other side. So the double D prep refers to it looking... Sorry, but anyway, that's it. If you're doing a... Actually, I think it would really be... Well, it could be like that. It could also be, of course, like that, double D prep. If you're doing a metal application, <clears throat> you would prep this double D sort of prep. You can see why they call it that. Um, there are dies that we sell that will allow you to prep double D preps into thin gauge, you know, standard gauge metal filing cabinets. But if you're doing a wood application, you can't do a double D prep. You're going to drill a round hole. Well, you need those two prongs to bite into the back of the wood to keep that, um, keep this from rotating. And that's the bottom line. <clears throat> you also heard to make it key retaining those plastic pieces. They're not in this package. Uh, I can't explain why. I know that the client does not require key retaining. Otherwise, that would have been an issue. But there ought to be plastic shims. Now, what those plastic shims do is they will fill the area. This is a good picture, I suppose. Fill this area where it's open here, filled here, so that when it's filled, you can't pull the key out because there's no room for the tumblers to... Re there's no room for the tumblers to leave the cylinder plug and up into the housing because that space in the housing has been filled. And that's how that works. Okay. Uh, the rest of the catalog is pretty handy. Uh, it will go through all of their different components. ESP has a smattering of cam locks that you will find great success if you have a mailbox. Say Bomber, who stopped making mailboxes in 2019, and you need locks for those. We can supply you with ESP cam locks for a Bomber mailbox application and others, naturally. Showcase locks, different types of locks. Uh, drawer locks, sliding door locks, <clears throat> mailbox locks, letterbox locks, you know, however you're going to use these sorts of items. What I don't believe is in here, however, is a listing of all of their cams, which is unfortunate. 
because we don't know what they offer in terms of different cams. You know, these other mailbox locks, they include a variety of different cams depending on the application. Um, you know, I'd like to have, you know, dimensions on this, but that doesn't exist. Um, I had I had guessed that to be 3 eighths, I believe, earlier. <clears throat> Let me double check that with my caliper, at least as accurate as possible. I would say that that offset is, no, it's about a quarter inch. About a quarter inch, I would say, meaning from this face from here to here is a quarter inch. Okay. So nonetheless, there's the rest of the catalog. I would encourage that you review it. Good customer service, as you evidenced earlier. Okay. Let's wrap up this video on camera. I have indeed called ESP a handful of times. They are uh, with other companies. Uh, Hudson, as you had also heard, um, and I believe HPC is also involved in that. They're a locksmithing tool uh, manufacturer. Key machines, uh, code cards for those, the blitz, the punch machine. They have other uh, key cutting equipment, uh, locksmithing supplies, tools, things of that nature. Um, mailbox locks, that's what I think of ESP, uh, mostly because they do such a great job with it. That package comes and it's, here, client, you, you, this is all going to work. And what I'll do is, if a client has a mailbox and they don't know whose mailbox it is, and I don't know either because I can't really tell, um, only because we're not intimately familiar with every mailbox manufacturer that ever existed, we are with Bomber because we sold that. Um, but if we get a look at the cam on the back of it that generally is a telltale sign as to what brand that is but when ESP is supplying those cam locks with three four or five different cams it's kind of hard to not get one that's uh, to get one that's not going to work I should say I appreciate their tech support very pleasant people every time that I speak to them any questions on the ULR-344 STD or any other ESP product please feel free to reach out to us and thank you Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.